Hello and welcome to another edition of the How to Grow Your E-commerce Business podcast. I'm here with my colleague Tom. We both van, run Vendub.com. We are a direct consumer e-commerce agency. Um, also, please uh, get your copy of my book uh, available in all good bookshops, but you can get it for free. I've dropped the note in the show notes. So today we're going to talk about Google Shopping, how you can use it to grow your e-commerce business. I'm going to be answering the questions, I'm, and Tom is going to be answering them, asking them. So, Tom, would you like to kick off, please? Well, I think a good place to start is why should you use Google Shopping in the first place? So we'll, we'll talk about what it is and how to use it in a bit more detail. But let's start with the big question, the, the why question. Why use it? OK, well, Google Shopping is Google's. Um, well, first off, what is Google? I'm sure everyone knows, but Google's the world's biggest search engine. And Google Shopping are the, the product specific search and the ads at the top of um, uh, of the um of the search engine of the search results page so this is uh, google is the second largest place where people go and look for um product related search results the biggest being amazon amazon's got 50 percent. google's got 31 percent. so if you want your products to be seen on google that is where the products need to be displayed okay and in terms of uh sales but what kind of sales do you you know what percentage of your website sales might be well, it depends. I mean, it's a bit of a slightly difficult question to answer, but um, you should be looking at it probably the majority of your sales. I mean, to a certain extent, um, as a new business, you know, you're not, it, it, you know, you, the, the, you're unlikely to get that many organic sales. So most of your sales are probably going to come from Google Shopping. Um, if you're a more mature business, then you'll probably get a higher proportion of your sales from email and also from SEO. So, you know, it could be, you know, somewhere between 30 and 90% could come from Google Shopping. So it's one of the key channels. It is account. something you shouldn't be ignoring. Uh, and I think it's probably worth saying that Google have increasingly monetized their search results page. So what Google don't want to do is give anything away for free. So all the best real estate on their page up at the top is all paid for. And the unpaid for, the organic results come lower down the page as, you, as you're showing now. So which means that SEO is ever less important and paid Google is ever more important. So you know, if 10 years ago, you know, you didn't think paid ads were that important and SEO was doing it all for you, I bet that is no longer the case. Yes, I mean, it's fair to say that the, you know, the, the ads have been taking up more and more of the real estate on the page. And in fact, often there are absolutely, there's no unpaid placements ab above the page. Um, and so the, the, the place where people, are, the first thing they see when they, they search for something, um, if, for example, if they're searching for an iPhone, they'll see like, you know, iPhones displayed, will be those, those pictorial ads, the shopping ads that appear right at the top of the page. Now, it's worth saying that the other place these ads appear is in, is in the shopping tab on the Google search results page. Um, this has uh, both a free and a paid bit. So the, again, the paid ads appear at the top and the free listings appear at the bottom. From experience, the it, you know it's obviously worth getting the free uh, clicks because you know free is great, but um, almost all like ninety five percent of your traffic will come from those paid ads. Okay, so the, you, you're showing what it looks like. Um, what, what exactly are they? You know, how, how do they work? Okay, so if you've got a website, first off, before you can do any ads, you need to have a website, right? You need a website that sells something. Google Shopping ads are for physical products, so it can't be for downloads and it can't be for you know, ebooks and stuff like that. It has to be for physical products. So what happens is you have a website and you have a feed, and what we mean by a feed is just literally the product data being pushed over from your website to something called the Google Merchant Center. That's where it stores all your product data. And then that gets pushed over to Google Ads. And that's where you create your Google Ads campaigns. Um, so it's you, you do need, there's a certain amount of, of setup required. But that's the fundamentally the basics of setting up the ads. And it's fair to say that you know systems like Shopify have inbuilt feeds and automatic links through to places like Google. So you know that, that, that whole process can be relatively easily set up. It, you know, it doesn't require a, a, an, a, an IT genius to do that. Um, so in terms of creating a Google Ads campaign, how do you start? OK, so first off, obviously, you need a you need your your a good um, you need your inventory to be in your on your website. So you need a, a, a transactional website um, and then you need to probably install a, an app on that website to create the feed. And you need to have a Google Merchant Center account. 
um, and integrate the two. And then so that the, the, the content will be appearing in the Google Merchant Center. Now it's from the Google Merchant Center where you select whether you know you need to make sure that your, your um, products are being shown on the on the free listings on Google. Then you know, make sure there's a connection between Google Merchant Center and your Google Ads account, and then you create a, um, a Google Shopping campaign in there. And we'll talk about the different types of campaign in a minute. Um, so it's important to, to have um, high quality product data on your website, which is then used to create your, your product ads, because these, um, these titles and these images come directly from your website. And how important is it in, you know, to get those things right, you know, what, what difference does it make to your success? Well, I think it's pretty, uh, it's kind of hard to put a figure on it. But I mean, firstly, you know, you need to have good quality content on your website anyway, because good quality content, you're, you know, you're paying a lot of money to drive traffic from Google to your website. So you want to make sure the conversion rate, that is the percentage of people who buy things is as high as possible. So on every level, you need to have great product data. Now, these days, you know, the, the, the ads are becoming more and more automated. And that means that it's less about, about specifying the targets and it's more about, you know, the, the quality of your offer. So it's, that's fundamentally online. That's the quality of your product data and the quality of your website and the offer as in your price and your delivery. So that is, you know, the, the, the success factor all along the kind of the chain between, you know, someone clicking an ad to, to buying is you need to have good quality product data and, and a good offer. And you know the the that is uh, that that data will appear on your website, but it also appears on these um, Google Shopping ads. So critical. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if uh, if that's an overview of Google Shopping, let's dive into the detail a little bit more. So we love a bit of detail, don't we? Tom? A bit of detail. We and love a bit of detail. The old cliche, retailers' detail still appears. Yes. You know, I learned that when I was at Sainsbury's many years ago, but it, it, it is still the case. So what, what, what are the different types of shopping campaign you can run? Well, there's fundamentally two different types of shopping campaign. There's standard shopping and there's performance max. Now, uh, with standard shopping, you have a bit more control over it. You can, um, well, first of all, to say this, it, it, the Google shopping ads work in a different way to the traditional text ads. So they work in a different way to, to the, the text ads you see at the bottom of the page. In the for text ads, you will set um, keyword targets. You say, I want to appear for these keywords. Whereas with shopping ads, you don't set any targets. Google looks at your product data, another reason why you need to have high quality product data with keywords in it. And it will decide, it'll look at these products and it'll use machine learning to decide which um, ads the, um, you know, for which searches these products will appear. And it's, it's pretty good at that. Um, now, with uh, Google um, standard shopping ads, what you can do is you can you, you, it'll, it'll just, you can choose negative keywords to say, I don't want to appear for this. And you also have more control over the targeting and you have more control over other, other settings on it. Like, for example, you can do um, day parting where you have you know, different bids at different times of day. Um, so um, it's, you have more control, but um, it's harder to set up and harder to manage. Um, and the other type is Performance Max, which is Google's um, most uh, most, um, most recent, most contemporary um, campaign type. We have almost no control, um, but you know, you just you just provide them with your product data. You tell you give them a, a target for how much you want to spend. So you give them a, a ROAS target, um, and a ROAS is return on advertising spend. So if you gave them a ROAS target of a thousand percent. That would mean that you'd want to spend um, ten percent, you know, ten pounds for every hundred pounds of, of sales you get. Now, that's a target. Google doesn't it tries to work to that, um, but uh, you know that that's the information you're you're giving to Google. So there's um, from experience, Performance Max works really well, um, and you found that, haven't you, Tom? Running running campaigns. Yeah, yeah um, no. I, in my experience, you know you can probably get as good a return of performance max as you can trying to do it all yourself manually in something like shopping or in traditional Google ads. So, you know, getting a ROAS of 500%, so that's a 20% cost of advertising is relatively easy on performance max if you have a website that is reasonably good at converting customers. So yeah, I, I, I think it's pretty good. You know, 20%, you could you get 15%, you know, sometimes it depends on the market you're operating in. And a lot of it is, as you said earlier, how good your conversion rate is. So 
if you double your conversion rate in your website, you will also double the return you get off your Google Ads investment. It's, it's pretty well as simple as that. Yeah, so, so I mean, I found, I mean, 10% is, I've never managed to do better than 10%. 10% is really good and 20% is okay-ish. I think Something 20% is part of the course. If, yeah. If you're 15, you know, you're probably, you know, top quartile. If you're getting 10%, well done you. Well, it depends. I mean, so some things like, I mean, you know, the, um, obviously in, in, I mean, to a certain extent, the more you spend, the more sales you'll get, right? Mm -hmm. So if you're looking at something like apparel, like clothing, they would spend a lot more. So, you know, I get, you know, pinged on LinkedIn saying, oh, we're going to row ass of three or something, as in, you know, 300%, um, which I always look at that. I think it's a bit weak. Um, but then I used to be in an industry where there were no margins. So we used to try and get, you know, we were, we were, we were as tight as possible. And, and that's a really good point. So, you know, your gross margin determines what kind of ROAS you, you're happy with. So, you know, a 300% ROAS might be entirely fine if you're making an 80 or 90% gross margin. If your gross margin is 40%, then you, you're going to need to do quite a lot better than that. Well, the other thing is also, you know, what the, if you have a better idea of the lifetime value of a customer. I mean, if you're selling, um, I don't know, coffee subscriptions or something where people come back, unlike me, I never come back. I just get the special offer and bug off. But the <laughs> other people apparently do that. Or they must do. Um, mm -hmm. But I used to be in the nursery market and nobody bought anything. They just had a kid once, it grew up and they bought it once. Yeah. Don't be in that market. But And, and there, there is a setting within Performance Max that allows you to add a, you know, a, a, a fixed sum of money to to reflect the fact that, you know, for some time, for some products, you have a lifetime value of that customer. So, you know, razor blades is a classic one. You buy the handle. You only and, use them once. <laughs> well, I, I don't use a, a razor anymore, but uh, you buy the handle and then you have a stream of uh, of the blades coming through. So you might be willing to pe to spend, let's say, you know, £100 to acquire a customer for a razor blade handle, even though that handle only, you know, has an RSP of 10 quid. So, you know, because you know you've got this stream coming through. So that, that, that's something you can do. I think you need to be really confident of a your lifetime customer value if you're going to do that, and b the how people are going to in future buy those razor blades. Because if they're going to go through Google Shopping every time, you might be paying again every time that they come. Or you so, might also be some sort of VC backed company looking to burn money because it's someone else's. <laughs> you whatever you like. <laughs> I think even VCs are more cautious about burning money now. No, we're trying to acquire customers. So yes. Um, Get a, yeah, put in a spreadsheet. Yeah, be, be, be confident of your numbers, I think. You know, and, you know, a spreadsheet isn't always the solution to, to things, but in e-commerce, a spreadsheet is very often the solution. I think it's a good idea. My experience is that you need to, when you first set up your campaign, you need to give it a small budget because they can go quite nuts to begin with before because there's a learning period yeah. when you set it up, when it's just trying to learn about, you know, learn about your customers, et cetera. And you need to... You know, on those that you know, start off with a ten pound a day budget, and then when you can see the kind of performance it's giving you, and you're happy with that, slowly, well, not even that slowly, over the course of a few weeks, put the budget up, and then you'll probably get to a point where you'll just have your budget way up because you don't want to run out of budget on a day. If you're happy with what the the rowers you're getting, put the budget up. You know, your your budget up above your daily spend, so you get as many sales as you can at that at that target. Yeah, and, and Google is very good at telling you if you are hitting your your daily budget i mean of course they're good at telling you of course it is yes <laughs> but, that tends to be, when you talk to google reps they are advert over time and say, if you you could you could you know why don't you put down the the your your target and, and up your budget the thing that's pretty much all they say as far as <laughs> well I, i'm going to slightly challenge you on that because we've had a google rep in oh the yeah past. that's true and i was really grumpy reps. i was really grumpy with him and he was really helpful sorry Thank i you, apologize Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> That, that, that is true. Um, so, yeah, the, you, you talked about training the um, you know, Google learning. So Google says they have a 30 day learning period over which, you know, that, that's the AI machine learning, understanding how they can get the best out of your products with, you know, the, the, the whole universe of customers out there. They also say that, you know, each campaign needs at least 50 transactions a month for it to be able to learn. So what you don't want to do is create trans, uh, create campaigns that have a very small number of products in that aren't getting 50 transactions a month because it, it just needs those data points to learn from. So, you know, start off by putting all of your products into a campaign to get that learning. And then over time, what you can do is split your products out. So I'm slightly jumping ahead to how you optimize a campaign, but 
what you can do is create different tiers of products in different campaigns. So let, let's say you've got some products that sell really well and some that aren't selling at all. You might want to split those because Google finds it easy selling the ones that sell well, and it will largely ignore the ones that don't do very much. So if you put those products in a separate campaign, it will have to pay more attention to those. Similarly, you might also want to split your campaigns between products that have a high gross margin and a low gross margin, if you have such things. So then you can set different ROAS targets for each campaign and for each type of product. Um, so we, we talked a little bit about the different types of campaigns. What, what, what setup is required, Trevor? Well, we talked about the, the OK, so uh, OK, just to reiterate myself, you obviously need a website. You need a feed from that website. So there's um, if you Shopify, there's a there's a, a Google um, plugin. Um, I think it's called Google and YouTube. Or you can use um, that's great if you just got, you know, it's a free app. That's great if you just got one, um, you just want to do one feed. But if you, for example, have got a multi a multilingual website, you want to do multiple feeds and you're going to need a more sophisticated um, feed app there's quite a few out there i think the one we've used called multi feeds yes, uh, which does the trick um integrate that into your uh google merchant center account um and then when you get to 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 google um uh when it you know then in google you know in google merchant center it'll it'll give you an overview of feed and it'll, it'll give you ways and you can optimize that we'll talk about that more in a minute um in Google, um, in Google Ads, uh, you need to set up the campaigns. Um, it'll take you through a, a campaign process. The important thing is to set up, um, particularly on the on Performance Max, is um, you need to set up something called audience signals, and that gives because you know these days you know Google has less information to go on because of the lack of track. You know when when Apple did their update. Um, and people turning off cookies, etc. The more information that you can give Google about your customers, the better. So, you, audience of signals allows you to give them things like customer data, um, similar websites, market segments, anything which will tell them more about your products. And we've seen a real jump in performance when these things have been set up properly. So, you can, um, particularly customer data, because if you know if you give people Gmails, then they can know more about those customers. Because because Google is is you know, big brother spying on us and we're just giving the data for free and don't notice it because we are the product. But anyway, um, the, yeah, um, uh, so we've seen a, you know, it's it, it, a real way of improving the, the performance of your site. So they're the things, you know, just uh, they're, they're the main things. Have I missed anything out, Tom? I don't think so. I mean, I think it's worth saying that, you know, people who will have used Google Ads in the past will have spent lots of time researching keywords you don't need to do any of that on Performance Max. Performance Max does all of that for you. You know, it, it, it it's just clever AI and it just gets on and works out the right keywords in the background. <coughs> so um, so you're saying it's pretty easy to set up these campaigns. How, how do you then improve them? Well, I mean, first you need to, you need to, you know, all the things we've talked about, you need to take a look at every single part of it and, and optimize. So, you know, you need to talk about the website, you need to have a, a high quality feed. So that means high quality images, it means high quality descriptions. Um, so, you know, the, the main image needs to be um, on a, um, let's just go back to this. So if you see, um, or if we look at if we look at a, an advert, you need to have the main image needs to be a product on a white background that takes up the whole, um, the whole of the, of the, of the image, you know, no border on it. Um, you know, and then you need to have a description which has contains the kind of keywords that people are going to be looking for when they search for your products. You also need to look at the attributes um, that, uh, you know, there's a whole lot of, of um, optional attributes. I mean, there's, there's the most important of which is the barcode. Um, and then there's, you know, there's a, a, a Google um, category and um, there's various other attributes. And Google this is all information to tell Google about the kind of product it is and the kind of customer it should look for. So. Mm -hmm an excellent quality feed to begin with. Um, then uh, we talked about um, the, you know, you also think about, you know, how much, you know, optimize, you know, the budget, you don't want to run out of budget. Um, and you also don't want to run out, you don't want to either, you don't want to, you know, you want to get your stock levels right. So make sure that the, the right stock level is going from your website to Google Shopping, because I mean, obviously you don't want to be advertising on things you don't have in stock um, and vice versa, if you're in stock, 
you know you want to be running ads so that's really important really basic but a lot of companies get that wrong all the time i frequently click on ads and it's not not available um another thing is to have you know, you know if you have um variations set up on your website you know you, you have like a, a drop down with the different colors that means that people will go to a page which has multiple options and it's best to do that and then to have you know multiple pages for the same product um we talked about um you know, audience signals um also think about um you know the, the your the offer you have and another thing is the you know particularly in terms of the pricing now the uh, it doesn't really uh, google shop doesn't really have a buy box in the same way that amazon does the most important thing would be in the the first few offers and you know google when it when it any Google ads, they're, they're ordered in terms of something called um, quality score, which is, um, they're, okay, there's something called, ad, the, the, the rank of the ad is called the ad rank, right? And the inputs to the ad rank are the quality score, and that, roughly speaking, is Google's perception of how relevant your ad is to the query, and also how much you pay. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and also, you know, another thing in these terms of these things is the price. So if you can be, you know, if your offer is the same as someone else, is, is you've got the same price as someone else's, but the same quality score and the same whatever. Um, if you're one P cheaper, then you'll get that, you know, leftmost position and you can get software. There's one's called price sync, but there's loads of them, which will enable you to, to reprice against other people's thing for the same barcoded product. So uh, optimize your, uh, so just to recap, Optimize your offer, so your pricing. Uh, optimize your, your product data. Optimize your um, uh, your audience signals, um, and make sure that the, you know your your products in stock and you have the right budget. There's some really good ways of optimizing it. I must have left something out, Tom. I'm sure you're gasping to say something. <laughs> well, I was going to say a couple of things. So um, when you were talking about how Google compares pricing. Google's smart enough to also take into account the shipping costs as well. So it will, you know, look at both, um, you know, the, the, the standard pricing and also the pricing including shipping. So if, if you're a bit more expensive but include free shipping, don't worry about that. Google will not penalize you. Um, I, I think the other thing about optimizing it is maybe kind of how do you target? So you talked about targeting in terms of ROAS, but there's other ways you can target your campaigns as well. So you, you can target for, you know, volume of sales, how, what, what other ways can you target? Well, you can target like, I mean, well, okay, so fundamentally the location is targeting. It depends which, what kind of um, campaign you're adding on, but on all types of Google Shopping campaign, you can target based on location. So obviously, I mean, for example, let's say you're selling furniture and you can't deliver it to Northern Ireland or the Isle of Wight, right? There's no point advertising to those people. Um, and if you're using, so that's on all types of, of uh, shopping campaign. If you're using a standard shopping campaign, you can uh, you can filter out negative keywords. Um, and there's a, um, what you can, I mean, what some people do is you, you can have different kinds of structures. So if you have, you know, if you use Performance Max and um, standard in, uh, in conjunction with each other, um, if you filter out, there's a there's a feature on Performance Max where you can filter out branded searches, and that makes Performance Max work harder because you know it, it, it's then looking for these you know because if someone's searching for a brand, then they're a dead cert, right? Mm -hmm. Whereas if you're you're making it use search for those non-branded terms, um, you're making Performance Max work harder, and you're pushing the the um, the branded terms onto your um, standard shopping campaign. We have more control and more and more targeting. So that is that is a way of of, of using them in conjunction. Um, also, you talked about the uh, you know the, the, having a structure in the performance max. You have if you have multiple campaigns, I mean two or three is probably enough. Where what you do is you you have your kind of winners, your top sellers, and your top campaign. And what will happen is that then Google will start ignoring the products that aren't the top winners. And you, so therefore, you take those out of your first campaign, you put them in a second campaign, and therefore you're signing a different budget to those those other products and you'll find that those other products then start to actually pick up sales yeah um, and it's also worth you know when we talk about optimizing going through product by product that you'll find that some products will be absorbing a lot of budget but not generating much in the way of sales so for instance you know trevor and i had a business in the past that sold amongst many other things toy microwaves now we had a lot of people who were seeing these microwaves toy microwaves and thinking they're real ones so they click through 
discover it as a toy and then not buy it. And that was burning up loads of money. So we removed those from the Google campaign and it saved us a lot and our ROAS went up as a result. So, it, you know, you should regularly, you know, I'd say once a month, just check that there is nothing like that in, in, in your setup that is burning through money. It might be that you need to change the product details. It might be that, you know, like the toy microwaves, people are always going to confuse it. We had toy in the title, but people still confused it. So it, just be really on top of the numbers. There is no sin save stupidity. <laughs> and I just wanted to pick up, you made a point about geographical targeting. There's a, within the setup of Google Shopping, that if you target the UK, it gives you two options. It's people who've ever shown an interest in the UK or people who live in the UK. So you need to think about which one you want. And you probably, if you're a UK-based business, want people who live in the UK, not people who have shown an interest in the UK. We're thinking what you don't want to do is, is select nothing like I've done in the past, and then you get masses of people from Iraq and India clicking on adverts and not buying anything. And costing you an awful lot of money. Which is why you need to have it at £10 on the first day so you so you don't screw it up like I did. So that, that kind of leads us on neatly to you know the, the next point, which is, you know, it, it, is Google Shopping available internationally? And how does no, that it work? certainly is. And that's one of the best things about it. So you can very easily, uh, say if you've got a Shopify website, you could use something like Shopify Markets to localize your website. And then you can feed each different country's feed, the translated feed, into Google Merchant Center. That's when you need your better um, feed app. And then you can create um, campaigns for each country. So it enables you very easily to reach uh, customers all over the world from the same website. And it, it all works the same for each country as well. Uh, but obviously, you need to have your shipping set up for each country, etc. Shipping is usually the hardest part, you know, setting up Google. Well, this is why free shipping is, is easier on so many levels. <laughs> yes. It's difficult to do for internationally, but. Yeah. Um, so we're kind of getting towards the end. Just a few more bits and pieces. You know, how... How does the, the charging, how does the cost for this work? Well, it is, um, it, so it is, you'll get charged on a, on a, on your target you set at a ROAS basis, right? Well, if you're, if you're using performance max, you can only set ROAS targets. You say, okay, ROAS of, of uh, 1,000% means that I'm looking to spend 10% of my sale price on, on, on ads, right? Um, on uh, uh, standard shopping campaigns, you have some other options. You can you can do max click and and, and maximize um, impressions and stuff like that. Um, if you but you see but you 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 set the targets in one baby, you're always charged on a pay per click basis. So um, whereas I mean, you, there's none of this. You know, there's no impressions. It's all it's all just on a on a, on a pay per click basis. Excellent. So. I think that's probably about it for we've covered for a lot. I think we've covered a lot. a lot. Have you got anything more to say? I, um, I, I think I've, I've, I've totally just just monologued about Google Ads. <laughs> One of your favourite topics, isn't it? So why not? <laughs> just full of it. <laughs> right. So, uh, Trevor, but before we end, is there anything that's inspired you recently? Let's well, I don't know. Do you know what? I always like I like a fluffy question at the end of the thing. So I've been watching. I've been totally, totally um, binged Slow Horses on Apple TV recently. It's absolutely fantastic. I mean, it's absurd. But it's fantastic. <laughs> it's all about about grumpy, grumpy MI5 officers, and Gary Ullman's amazing in it. And I'd really recommend that for some escapist nonsense. <laughs> what about you tom well i've just got back from holiday so i think that's what's inspired me i had a week in the algarve off season lovely weather good food a lot of walking and yeah i feel yeah. very charged after that great okay um uh, well uh thanks everyone for listening uh, so check the show notes uh we'll put some useful links in there and we'll see you again soon Toodle -pip. Bye. bye